blessing with money, oh baby. Oh. My boy go blessing with money. Oh, everybody welcome welcome facebook welcome instagram another episode of friday finance okay by the way that's dj also city playing in the background i don't own the rights to the music by the way happy friday people hey <laughs> You do. That's awesome, man. Yes. So this is my little live show that I do on Friday nights from time to time. So I'm back on air. Last week was the first episode back on air. So welcome. Yes, welcome. Hey, Oded. How are you, Oded? Welcome, welcome, everybody. Guys, remember, you have to say hello once you come on. Say hello so I know you're there. Say hello, people, so I know you're there. Yeah, these glasses are not fitting me very well. I don't know about these glasses, guys. Seriously. Anyways, guys, happy Friday. Welcome to Friday Finance. Let's get on to it because you know we have a lot to talk about, okay? So um, today, I want to move on to part two of the credit cards, guys. Part two of credit cards. Two of three. Last week, we did part one. Today, we're doing part two. And next week, we're going to do part three. Oh, my God. I can't wait for next week. Part three, guys, okay? Uh, you can look up last week's episode, guys. It's on my timeline, whether you're on Facebook or Instagram, it's on my timeline. Now, what you guys have to realize is that if you use credit cards properly, credit cards can actually become a side hustle, guys. I'm telling you, because I am living it, okay? I do it, I use it, so I am telling you from experience, guys, okay? So we'll also be looking at the stimulus plan. I will break it down for you. As always, I'm going to break it down for you so you know exactly what's going on with the stimulus plan. And then last but not least, you know we got to talk about the stock market, okay? So we'll be chatting about the stock market in a little bit. Now, guys, I just want to go ahead and share this with you because this week, I think, um, I saw something on Facebook and it kind of like... Uh, Pick something. It picked something in me. Some something. Okay. It kind of like touched something in me. So, um, I just want to remind people of this. Okay. When I share information with you, I'm actually sharing some of my experiences with you. Okay, guys. Okay. I don't just research all this information and bring it to you. Some of it, I've actually lived it. Okay. And then whatever else that I add on there, I do a little bit of research. But the majority of it does. I've actually lived it. So because I've learned, I've experienced it, now I'm bringing my experiences to you, my knowledge to you, so that if somebody else can benefit from this, why not share out the information, guys? I firmly believe that we owe it to each other to teach one another, to pass on knowledge, pass on information. And so... My thing is, when you die with all this knowledge, with all this information, what you going to do with it? Seriously, what are you going to do with it? You can't do anything um, with it, so what's the point in holding it to yourself? So when I come to you guys, I humbly come to you, okay? It took some time to get to where I am. It did not just happen yesterday. This is a process, okay, guys? I am in a process, and I'm still working on me. Okay, because I have goals here I've set for myself, which I'm trying to get to. So, guys, this just didn't happen overnight. Okay, and it may seem that way, guys, because I put in the work. I did a lot of work. I'm telling you guys, I did so much work, so much work for me to get here. So, if it seems like it's easy, then what does that mean? It means, guys, you need to do the work on your finances. That's what I'm talking Guys, listen, listen, there were times when it was hard, okay? It was hard, and I've shared some of those times with you guys. 
So it's not as if I come on here on my high horse, I'm doing better. No, 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 no. Okay, I am telling you guys, most of this stuff is from experience and I'm sharing it with you so that hopefully I can actually help at least one person. That's my goal, to help at least one person. So guys, it took a lot of work to get here. So tonight I am going to continue with the credit cards, guys, okay? So on managing the credit cards, I'm going to bring five more things to you, five more guys. So here we are, okay? Guys, listen, okay? The third part is going to happen next week. Um, I do hope you listen carefully because some of this stuff I'm telling you, I'm bringing it to you because they're from my experiences. The majority of it, I've lived it. Okay, so number one, do not apply for too many credit cards, guys. When you apply for too many credit cards, it reduces the length of your credit history. Let's say, for example, you have two credit cards right now, okay? On average, the credit history was there for six years. You go and apply for a third card. So now, okay, the credit history you had for a total of six years is going to go down to four years because they look at the average, guys. I don't want to do a lot of math with you because I'm not teaching math right now. I'm talking and educating you guys about money. But, guys, the point is two credit cards, six years each, adds up to 12, okay? Now, if you go and get a third one, now you got three credit cards. They still add up to 12. So if you do the average, 12 divided by three, guys, gives you four years. So it reduces the length of your credit history. So essentially, you want to have a long credit history because it looks more favorable to your creditors, guys, okay? So don't apply for too many credit cards. That's number one. Number two, guys, ideally, you want to pay your credit cards in full every single month. Hi, Jada. Thanks for coming. Guys, say hi once you come in. Say hi so I know who's there, okay? Anyways, guys, you want to pay off your credit cards in full every single month. Now, listen, listen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Guys, listen. It took me forever to learn this stuff, okay? Listen, I got my first credit card as a freshman in college, guys. And let me tell you, I made so many mistakes. Shazam, I made so many mistakes. Okay, guys, if you cannot afford to pay the minimum, you need to pay more than the minimum every single time. For example, if your monthly payment is $150, okay, the minimum is $150, don't pay $150, pay $200, pay $250, pay $300, pay as much of it as you possibly can. Why? You're going to avoid the interest, guys. It's the interest that people get trapped in. Never pay the minimum. And you know what I love right now about the credit card statements? Once you get your credit card statements, it tells you how long it's going to take if you just pay the minimum, okay? So, guys, paying the minimum is actually a trap, okay? It's a trap. So, do not pay the minimum on your credit cards. Best thing to do, pay the entire balance and full. Hey, Yannick. Welcome. Welcome. All right, guys. Number three, if you have a credit card, listen to this one, guys. Okay. Someone just asked me about this. If you have a credit card with a large balance and plus the interest is really high on it. Listen, guys. And you have, if you have great credit, you need to have decent credit. Okay. If you have decent credit, but you've got this credit card over here with a large balance on it, who knows? Maybe your AC went out or something and you had to replace it, and the credit card you used to pay it charges a high interest, okay? Here's what you should do. Apply for a new card. Look for a card that has 0% interest rate on balance transfers. Guys, you listening? 0% interest rate on a balance transfer for at least six months. There are cards that will do it for six months. There are cards that will do it for nine months. There are cards that will do it for 12 months. And there's a card out there that will even do it for 18 months. I had one of those cards where they gave it to me for 18 months, guys. 0% intro APR, 0%, okay? So I used the card. Essentially, I didn't have to pay anything to use the money on the card, so guys, the cards are out there, but you got to have decent credit to get those cards. So what do you do once you get the card? Move that balance over. There might be a slight fee because when you do a balance transfer, sometimes these credit card companies, they charge you a fee. So be careful with the fee. Just ask the question, what kind of fees are you charging? So once you know the fee, you have to decide, is this enough? Is this worth it for me to pay this fee or is it worth it for me to continue to pay the interest? Okay. So you have to balance it out and figure out what's better. Okay, guys, 
but you can do that. You can transfer the balance to a different card. Number four, guys, listen to this one. And this is a big one because I remember I posted something about this and everybody's like, what, what? Okay, so this one right here, guys, do not close a credit card once it's paid off. Seriously, do not close a credit card once you pay it off. Let me tell you what happens oftentimes because I've done it a couple of times myself and I didn't know any better. So I would pay off a credit card and I would be very upset with the credit card company. I'm like, that's it. I don't want to deal with you anymore. Just go ahead and close the card. Guys, that's the worst thing in the world to close off a credit card, especially when there's no annual fee. So if you're using the credit card, and there's no annual fee, you're done paying it off, guys. That's great credit history. But if you close it, you just lost that great credit history. Hello. Hello, okay? That's why you do not close your credit cards once they're paid off. If there's an annual fee though, you need to be careful. If there's an annual fee and you don't wanna use the credit card anymore, just, yeah, you need to close it, guys. Uh, because if you don't use the credit card, they're still going to charge you that annual fee and you're still gonna be expected to pay it because that annual fee is on the card, guys, okay? So, listen. Don't close your credit lines like that. Don't close them. Leave them open. Like my car loan. I finished paying that thing off in December of 2019. Uh, it's still open. Yes, the account is still open with Chase, guys. I'm not closing it off. What's the point? Okay, it's a credit line for me. It's a credit history for me. I'm not closing it off. Okay, so guys, leave those credit cards open even after you pay them off. Every once in a while, you know what? Just swipe it for some gas or something and pay. That's great credit history. You want great credit history. Number five, guys. Okay, I need everybody to listen. And you guys have to promise me you're going to share this, okay? Share this. Please share this information with as many people as you possibly can, guys. Because this one right here, let me tell you something, okay? I did not discover these things, okay, until like, what? two, three years ago, okay, three years ago, and you know I have kids, my kids could have really benefited from, I didn't know guys, see, you see, this is, this is what I'm telling you, remember how I told you guys, this is coming from experience, okay, that's what I told you guys at the beginning of the live, okay, I am not making this stuff up, okay, here's number five guys, here's a big one, big one, add your kids to your credit cards as an authorized user, by adding your kids to your credit cards as an authorized user, guys, you're helping them with a head start on their credit history. You're establishing credit history for them. You're establishing great credit history for them, especially if you have great credit. So add your kids as an authorized user. How do you do it? You pick up the phone, you call your credit card company and you say, I would like to add my child on my credit account as an authorized user. That doesn't mean that you're going to give them a credit card, okay? And you're just adding them as an authorized user, okay? And establishing their credit for them. Some of the credit card companies, guys, they have an age minimum requirement, but many of them, they don't, okay? So guys, please share this information with somebody. Find one person, at least one person, share this information. Because remember, guys, I am on this mission to spread financial literacy to as many people as possible. So the more of you share this information with other people, the more individuals we can reach with this great information. I'm telling you guys, somebody could benefit from this. My kids could have benefited from this. However, nobody shared it with me, okay? Nobody shared it with me. So I am sharing it with you guys, okay? Guys, I'm telling you, when I come on here, I am not making this up, okay? This is how I am all the time. This is how I am all the time. But once I start talking about money, I get extremely passionate about talking about money, okay? Guys, say hello once you come on. So guys, that was the five things about credit cards I needed to tell you, okay? Ask questions, by the way. I love questions, so drop your questions in the chat, guys. I love it. Can I reopen them once they're closed? Listen, once you close it, that credit card history is gone, okay? Even if you reopen it, they can't bring back the credit history. It's gone. Once you close it, it's gone. It's wiped out. Yeah. Okay. So guys, great information. Listen, share it with somebody. Please share it with somebody. Okay. Now, 
Uh, next week, Friday, guys, I'm going to talk about how you can use your credit card as a side hustle. Seriously, you can make money off your credit cards, guys. Seriously, you can. Okay, I'll give you a little tidbit. So recently, I started traveling again, okay? I went to Orlando. I stayed at two different hotels, one night each. I didn't pay money for those one nights. Why? Because I'm using my points, okay? I am using my points, guys. Yeah. So essentially, I use my credit card. My credit card is paying me, so now I'm taking the money, okay, to pay for my travels, okay? You guys know I love traveling. Anyways, guys, I'm going to move on, okay, to the stimulus plan now. So I'm transitioning to the stimulus plan because, guys, you know by now that the president signed off on the stimulus plan. So just in case you don't know what's included in the stimulus plan, you know I'm breaking it down for you. So here are five things <laughs> you should know about the stimulus plan, guys. And let me tell you, there's a whole lot included in the stimulus plan. Number one, guys, okay? Checks will start being directly deposited into your bank account starting this weekend, actually, okay? For some Americans. So by next week, most Americans will have seen their stimulus check at a minimum $1,400, depending on whether or not you have kids and the age of the kids, okay? So that's next week, guys, okay? At a minimum $1,400. Number two, a large portion of this stimulus plan, guys, will help to reduce the number of children living in poverty. When I heard that one, guys, it, oh my God, it just went right here, guys, because you know I'm an educator. I deal with these kids all the time, guys. And one of the things I used to do in my classroom, now I'm all virtual. I'm teaching all virtual classes. One of the things I used to do for my students, listen to this, guys. I would buy snacks and keep the snacks in the classroom. Why? Because I know there are kids who come to school in the morning hungry. They don't eat anything before getting to school, okay? Additionally, some of them cannot afford to go get something from the cafeteria, although they're doing better with the school lunches, although some of them don't want to eat the... Well, anyways, that's another story, okay? So, guys, I would have something in the classroom. Now that the bill is targeting, okay, underprivileged um, kids, guys, let me tell you, it warmed my heart. Um, the goal is to reduce poverty in, among kids by 50%. And poverty among adults by one third, okay? Guys, that is significant. I am sorry. I don't care what you say, guys. That is significant to me. That means that one out of every two children that used to be in poverty will no longer be in poverty. I would love it if we could eradicate it completely. I know it's going to be hard to do that. But guys, 50%, that's a really good start, okay? So, number three, number three, guys, listen this. Thank you. Thank you, DJ Rick Rock. Thank you so much, man. Uh, number three, the child tax credit. Listen to this one, guys. Will increase, this is the tax credit on your tax return. It's going to increase from $2,000 to $3,600 for kids under age six. Okay, child tax credit. So if you got two kids under age six, guys, that's $7,200 for the year and up to $3,000 for kids who are under age 17 because, you know, the tax credit phases out at age 17, okay? And then, guys, here's the best part. Listen to this one. Ha! Rather than wait until tax time to collect the tax credit, now people, parents, okay, will get the money in advance. So every month, they will get that child tax credit. So individuals with kids under age six will get about $300 per month. <laughs> and then individuals with kids up to age 17 will get about $250 a month. Shazam, shazam, shazam. Okay, repeat. I'm going to repeat. So the child tax credit you guys used to get when you file your tax return, Okay which is um, available to parents with low income up to age 17, okay? It's going to increase from $2,000 per child up to $3,600 per child under age 6, up to $3,000 for each child under age 17. 
And instead of waiting until tax time to get that money, now, guys, the money will start coming to you every single month. Shazam. Every single month. So every single month, if you have kids under age six, you'll get $3,000. If you have kids up to age 17, two fifty dollars per child. Yeah. Depending on your income, of course. All of this is income-based. Yeah. Okay? So, guys, that's a big one. That's another way they are targeting child poverty people. Mm-hmm. Okay? So now, guys, number four. Oh, my God. That, yeah, Shazam. Okay? There is so much included in the stimulus plan, guys. I don't think I've touched on everything, but I'm, I'm only giving you five. Okay? Here's another one. Number four, guys. A large portion of it will go... To help reduce medical care coverage, the premiums, guys, for a large number of individuals. So essentially, some of these Americans that used to pay a large premium, especially on, on, on the um, Obama plan, the premium will either go down, okay, or it will be nothing. It will be zero dollars, guys. Yeah. And of course, this all depends on your income, all right? It depends on your income. Guys, I mean, come on now. That's a lot. That is significant, people. Listen, I just don't know. I don't, I don't think people understand what is going on, what's happening, okay? What is happening? But, guys, I am breaking it down for you because I feel like people need to know what is going on in that stimulus plan, okay? Because there's so much in there for the average American, guys. The average person, okay? Before I came on air, they were talking about how many millions, okay, of new billionaires we have. I mean, new millionaires we have. I think I posted something about the new billionaires. Today, they were talking about the new millionaires, guys. Well, what about the average person? What about that low-income family with three kids, four kids, guys? What are they going to do? They can barely put food on the table. Additionally, guys, the minimum wage, the federal minimum wage is stagnant at $7.25, okay? What are those people going to do? How do you live on $7.25 with a family to feed? Okay, see, now I'm getting a little too excited. Let me calm down. <laughs> okay. Anyways, guys, uh, that was number four, okay? The medical part of it. And then last but not least, I had to go ahead and put this one in there because you know I'm an educator, okay? So guys, last but not least, billions will go to education to help open schools up, okay? They're going to reopen schools. So billions of dollars in that stimulus plan is dedicated to education so they can get these schools to reopen. Because guys, let me tell you, right now, it's really difficult for some of these kids at home to be at home all the time, guys. Especially when it comes to the socialization aspects of uh, being in school. You know, um, I primarily teach the older students, okay, whether it be at the high school or at the college. Uh, so the students at the high school, guys, and they tend to do okay, but the younger ones... The elementary age, middle school grades, guys, it's really, really hard on them. And so I'm happy that some of this money is targeting schools reopening. Uh, one of the things they included on there was the fact that every educator has to be vaccinated by the end of this month, okay? Every educator has to be vaccinated by March 30th or 31st. I'm not even sure how many days are in March, okay? So by the end of this month, all educators will be vaccinated. So they've got this huge program, massive program going on across the United States trying to inoculate all teachers. Right now, they're targeting teachers who are older than 50. I'm not there yet, people. No, I'm not 50, okay? And so uh, I didn't qualify. So now I'm waiting. I keep going into my publics asking them, okay, different publics, um, in the area, can I get a vaccine, please? <laughs> no problem. No problem. By the way, I'm going to post the video once I'm done. I always post the videos. So what you guys can do once the video is posted, actually, you can share this information right now, okay? Once the video is posted, too, you can go ahead and share it out. You guys can share the lives. You know, I keep forgetting these things, guys. Um, every time I do these um, videos, I do a live. 
I do um, a video for YouTube or for TikTok, I always, always forget, guys, to say, please share, please like, share, subscribe, follow. I always forget to say those things. Because for me, this is not what it's about, guys. This is about just disseminating information. And so because I am passionate about what I'm doing, and I'm doing this because I love doing it, okay? Um, I, I don't target that. Okay. I don't ask for subscribers. I don't ask for followers. Every once in a while, you'll hear me say it because I want that information to be spread out to everybody. But guys, most of the time, listen, <laughs> I'm just carrying on with the information. I just want that information out there. So once I'm done with the live, uh, please share it. There's other people who could use this. I think what I'm going to do is to go ahead and take that clip about the stimulus plan and create another video so I can put it up for other people to just watch that portion about the stimulus plan because I don't think a lot of people know exactly what's included in that stimulus plan. All right, guys. Oh my God, look at what, how late it was. Last week was my longest show. I will not do that again today, okay, guys? So on to stock market news. You guys know I love talking about the stock market. So now let's talk a little bit about the stock market, guys, okay? So the first thing that happened this week, guys, with the stock market is that Roblox, okay, Roblox, that little game that kids under age 13 like to play, okay, it went public this week. Um, it was supposed to be around, I think, $50 a share, but when it came out the gate, when it opened up on the market, listen, guys, <laughs> it was $75 a share. When I looked at it, it was $75 a share. And so many parents went and bought, I had parents asking me, when is Roblox coming public? So finally went public. So I texted some of my parents and I told them, you know, Roblox is public right now. You can go ahead and purchase shares. And many of them went on and purchased shares for their kids, okay, for birthday gifts, for a uh, Christmas gift, because they promised the kids they will buy Roblox when Roblox went public. So Roblox is now public. That little game that your kids like to play. If you're not a parent, guys, or if your kids are older, just find a little kid. Find, seriously, find a little kid and ask them, what is Roblox? They'll explain it to you, okay? Seriously, they will, okay? Um, number two, guys, the travel stocks. Oh, my God, those travel stocks, okay? Let me tell you, people are ready to travel. Like, I'm ready to travel, guys, okay? I'll tell you a little secret. Tomorrow, I'm, I'm heading out, okay? Tomorrow, I'm heading out. Um, travel stocks were riding high this week. So you got the airlines, the cruises. Uh, the hotels, the casinos, guys, all of this, they were riding very high this week. And uh, what I like to do when my stocks start riding like that, I like to go ahead and take some profit. Like, um, I'll take my capital. I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, one of the stocks I bought was Spirit Airlines, okay? Spirit Airlines, I think I was buying Spirit Airlines at like $9 a share, Okay. So what I started doing, because Spirit Airlines went up to about $37, $38 a share. So then I started selling some of my shares of Spirit Airlines so I can recoup, okay? So I can recoup my capital. I'm going to give you an example, okay? For example, if I had 40 shares of Spirit Airlines, guys, okay? 40 shares of Spirit Airlines um, at $9 each, okay? So um, that would have been $360, okay? But now Spirit Airlines, okay, is $36 a share, people. So for my $3,600, all I have to do is sell 10 shares. Now I've got my capital back. So I'm left with a total of 30 shares, and those 30 shares are riding the market for me, okay? So now my profit is making me money. My money is making me money. That's how I love it, guys. You know that. I want my money to make me some money, okay? So I, took, I, I started taking some profit, taking out my capital, and letting the rest of it ride. So um, yes, guys, yeah, the people are ready to start traveling again because people are getting tired of sitting at home. So it's like, okay, time to start traveling again. Uh, number three, guys, GameStop. GameStop was back, and the trading 13 started moving again. And for GameStop, a stock that was at $30 a share back in early February, guys, okay? It came back again. And so now GameStop is around $270 a share again. So people are still making money off the GameStop. Now, guys, be careful, okay? I don't make any recommendations to anybody. I'm just telling you to be careful because you know the stock market is 
very, very risky. It's not meant for everybody. No, it's not meant for everybody. Number four, guys, Tesla was plunging this week. Tesla went from a high last week too, from a high of about 800, over $800 a share. And I think um, this weekend went all the way down to like 500 and change, like $530 a share. So guys, um, what happens when some of my companies start performing very poorly? Remember what I told you earlier, I like to take out some profit. I like to take out my capital. So I started taking out my capital. Right now, the money I have in Tesla, that's just my profit, just riding the market. So I'm just gonna hang on to them, guys. And then of course, if I feel like there's some adverse reason for me to go ahead and sell some of my shares, I'll go ahead and sell some of my shares. But for now, I'm just hanging on to my shares, okay? And then the last thing I wanna say is this, guys. The market always fluctuates. It goes up, it goes down, okay? There's other companies that are always coming to the market. They're doing their IPO. IPO stands for Initial Public Offering, like Roblox had its IPO this week. That is when a stock goes public and you can buy shares in the company, guys. So as these new companies come public, you might wanna take some money from your older companies, guys, if you don't have the money available for you to invest right away and buy some of these newer companies. If it's a good company, if it's a company you believe in, miss, uh, I'm not gonna tell you which companies to purchase. No, mm -mm, I wouldn't do that to you, okay? <clears throat> I don't make any recommendations, guys, okay? Um, I'm not a professional, okay? So I cannot make any recommendations to you. So I just wanted to let you know that the stock market is very risky. What goes up must come down at some point, but the market is constantly fluctuating. I know some of you are scared. You have your little money in there and you really, really worried. But guys, remember the market is fluctuating. And when you invest for me, when I invest, I invest for the long term. Okay. I hold on to my stocks for the long term guys. Okay. That's how I like to invest. So guys, I think that was my third segment and I think I'm coming to an end. Just a reminder, guys, you know, um, I was telling you guys about the book last week and I ordered these books and they're taking forever to get here. Okay. I don't know what's going on with these books. Just a reminder, guys, most of the stuff that I share with you, it's in the book. Okay. It's in the book. So, um, what I started telling people is this, uh, to, Perhaps purchase the book directly from me. Send me a message if you want to purchase the book. It's $20, of course. And um, the $20 worth, um, it's worth it, guys. Let me tell you why it's worth it. Because you can buy a stock. You know, I just told you about Spirit Airlines, okay? Let's say you had purchased Spirit Airlines at $9, guys, okay? And now Spirit Airlines is trading at $36 a share. Uh, yeah, that's a profit of over $20, seriously. That's a profit over. So you can make your $20 just like, I talk about everything, guys. You see the credit cards I just talked about? All of that is in here, yeah. All that stuff about credit cards, banking, the stock market. There's a lot in here, guys. I poured my heart and my soul into this. And so uh, it was always there that I wanted to do this, but finally I did it. And here it is. I am targeting uh, primarily <clears throat> students in high school. Anybody who ever wanted to learn this in high school, but they didn't, or any adult right now that wants to share this information with their kids and they just don't know what to say to their kids, you could actually buy this and hand this to your kids. Personally, this is like a Bible, guys. I would have loved to have this when I was in high school, so I can always reference it. I even put a section in here where you can actually take notes. I'm telling you guys, you can to see, see, I'm, I'm, I'm not making this stuff up, okay? Right there, guys. You see that? It says take notes. Take some notes right here, okay? So um, I hope that you guys will pick up the book and read the book and get something out of it, guys. Um, it was a lot of work, you know, doing quarantine. I started working on it, guys, as a labor of um, love. I might as well just say that because, guys, I am very passionate about this. I want to go and spread this financial literacy. I want to make it accessible to everybody because a lot of people could use this information. And um, the more of us talk about money, the more we have these money conversations, 
the better we'll do with our finances. That's the whole goal of this, guys, okay? Five easy steps to transform your finances so you can do more, live more, and enjoy more. Remember, we came here, guys, to live, okay? We didn't just come here to work, 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 work until we die. No, 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 no. We came to live and enjoy life, okay? What's the point of working all the time, okay, for this money if you're not going to enjoy some of it? Yes, you need to enjoy some of it, guys. So, again, um, when you have an opportunity to, if you want to get a copy of the book, message me, guys, and I will make sure to get you a copy of the book. And that's all I had for you guys today. You guys didn't ask too many questions. You know I love questions. You guys didn't ask too many questions. But, guys, listen. I'm done. Until next Friday, guys, I'm going to leave you with some music. And that's it, people. Thank you so much for attending. You know, I appreciate every moment you spend with me on Friday afternoons, Friday nights, okay? I really, truly appreciate it. And, of course, please share. I am going to put this on my timeline. Please share this with as many people as possible. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Odette. Thank you, Yannick. Thank you. I don't know who's on. Um, I know. Let me see who's on here. Jada, you're on here, but I don't know who else is on here. There's a second person. I don't know who is on here, but anyways, thank you, whoever's on Facebook, and thank you, Instagram. Thank you so much, DJ. I see you. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Hey. Oh. Hey. That's it, guys. I'm out of here. Bye, everybody. Hey.